When discussing fictional dinosaurs, few are as iconic or formidable as Rexy, the main Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Jurassic Park franchise. Across three decades of films, she has earned a reputation not just as a cinematic legend, but as one of the most powerful terrestrial theropods in the franchise. But the true question is whether she could survive in the past. I mean, we've gone through many before, such as the Indominus Rex and Spinosaurus, but how would she hold up? G'day everybody, today we're covering if Rexy could survive within North America during the Cretaceous period. So without further the introduction, make sure to like and subscribe and let us figure out how well Rexy would perform in the prehistoric past. Rexy's size is described to be a bit all over the place because it's hard to set things in stone when it comes to fiction. But overall, she's described as measuring approximately 13.5 meters or 44.3 feet in length and standing 5.4 meters or 17.7 feet at the head, making her both longer and taller than most if not all accurate T-Rexes. Her weight is typically cited between 8.5 to 9.5 tons, which gives her a bulk advantage when it comes to close quarters combat. This mass translates into raw power. She's been shown hurling a six-ton Indominus Rex across the battlefield, and a male version of the same species managed to destroy a bus with a single headbutt. I mean, you have to give credit when it's deserved. Despite her size, Rexy is shockingly fast. At her peak, she's clocked in at around 51 kilometers an hour or 32 miles per hour, making her among the fastest of the large theropods depicted in the franchise. She's agile enough to react to flanking attacks from Velociraptors, as well as scrap and react with the Indominus Rex and Giganotosaurus. And to be able to fight these other creatures, she had to have quite the arsenal. With the bite force estimated at 34,000 newtons of force, it was more than powerful enough to pulverize bone and tear through even the bullet resistant hide of the Indominus Rex. It is also evident that she utilizes her skull for powerful headbutts and charges. As far as intelligence goes, she's pretty well up there. While not on par with the hyper-intelligent Velociraptors, Rexy has demonstrated cunning and problem-solving abilities. She famously tested the electrical fences before escaping Jurassic Park, and later she teamed up with Blue against the Indominus and cleverly used the Therizinosaurus as a weapon during a fight against the Giganotosaurus. However, she's far from perfect. Her senses at times can be quite lacking, both when it comes to smell and vision. They really needed to give her some contact lenses back in Jurassic Park. Also, her teeth are not the best design for a Tyrannosaur. Don't get me wrong, they are intimidating, but they are thinner and more knife-like. Good for slicing, but not the best for bone breaking. Her most iconic battles include the big one in JP1, where she attained a victory with minimal injury, the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World, which was a technical victory, although she wasn't in the most healthy state. There was also the Tarbosaurus in Camp Cretaceous, but she managed to win after gathering her bearings as a result of a helpful human distraction. Then lucky last, there was the Giganotus. Saurus. This was her toughest match yet, and she was ragdolled quite a bit, though she managed to win with the Therizinosaur's intervention. She also dominated Isla Nublar between Jurassic Park 1 and Jurassic World, as well as lived in Biosyn Sanctuary hunting prey and defending territory. While we do not see many of these hunts on screen, the implication is clear. She knows how to both survive and fight. You cannot discredit her entirely. She was coexisting with small, medium, and large theropods, Ceratopsians, Stegosaurids, and Kylosaurids, and many, many more. So will this iconic dinosaur will be able to survive the Cretaceous? Well, it's time to find out. And if you don't know how this survival guide is ranked, well, it's quite simple. We have three areas being scored. We score environmental suitability, diet, and resistance to threats or competition. These will then be added up and make a total score. So North America is a pretty broad area. What exactly are we looking into? Well, the formation that will be our center will be the Hell's Creek Formation. This was a very different place compared to what it is today. Instead, this region was a humid, almost subtropical environment. The climate was warm and stable with average temperatures reaching around 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This made this environment a lush jungle-like biome with thick vegetation and consistent waterways feeding into the complex network of rivers and wetlands. The terrain itself pretty much had everything to make Rexy comfortable, from rivers to floodplains to forests of conifers, ferns, and even some flowering plants. Now, environment is an area that the Jurassic Park dinosaurs do very well in as a result of their suitability to survive in a number of different climates and terrain types, and here is no different. Rex's swap from the experiences of Isla Nublar and the Biosyn Sanctuary would not be too dramatic here, and thus for environmental suitability, she would score a solid 9 out of 10. The dinosaurs of the late Cretaceous would not just be food, they would act as obstacles, threats, and on occasion, easy targets. Let's start with the obvious picks. Smaller dinosaurs like the Ornithomimids, such as Struthiomimus, as well as other dinosaurs like Pachycephalosaurus, smaller Ornithopods, and Oviraptosaurs would pose as much danger as a coughing baby to a hydrogen bomb. These dinosaurs would have had to rely on their smaller size and speed to evade predation from a giant such as Rexy. Though with her surprising speed, she could very well ambush, catch, and eat these smaller animals with relative ease. 
ease that is guessing she could catch up with them before they disappeared in the dense foliage. And we can argue for this as she does have some understanding of hunting smaller prey even early on. We saw in the first Jurassic Park film that she was capable of ambushing a herd of Gallimimuses. However, what about the larger herbivores of North America? Well, that's a different story entirely. First on our checklist, we have Edmontosaurus. Hadrosaurs deserve way more respect to be put on their names as some people treat them like overgrown cows. However, these large hadrosaurs in particular could grow over 12 meters or 39 feet in length and typically weighting between 5 to 7 tons, with some individuals potentially reaching over 13 tons. Hear those stats people and remember them. While they may have lacked horns or armor, they made up for it with their massive size, strong legs, and likely social herding behavior. Unlike the passive prey it is often depicted as in fiction, hadrosaurs would either bolt or, if left with no other choice, stand their ground and retaliate. There is no doubt in my mind that a 13-ton Edmontosaurus could ram or trample a predator like Rexy, potentially causing serious injury. While the smaller individuals would be fair game, large adults would not go down without a fight. Then we move on to Ankylosaurus. As far as on-screen appearances go, Rexy has not faced this type of dinosaur before, and I cannot blame her. It would be far from an easy fight. Measuring around 6 meters or 19.7 feet long and weighing roughly 5 tons, Ankylosaurus, as I've described countless times before, was a tank on four legs. Its back was covered in osteoderms acting as a natural coating of armor, and its tail ended in a club capable of swinging with an estimated force of 25,000 newtons. That is enough to crush bone or shatter joints. Added to this potent mix was that it was built close to the ground meaning carnivores such as Rexy would have to bend down in unfavorable positions just to get a bite off. A single well-placed tail swipe would cause significant injury to the legs. It is no exaggeration to say that this animal could cripple a theropod as powerful as Rexy if she did not treat it with caution. Perhaps Rexy's greatest threat in terms of prey in this ecosystem would be the Ceratopsians, the main of which being Triceratops. At its higher ends, this Ceratopsian could measure over 9 meters or 30 feet in length and could possibly weigh over 10 tons. But this time, I won't be forgetting about the other Ceratopsian in the region, this being Taurosaurus. This was a particularly large ceratopsian with its weights being often put in the heavier end of the spectrum if compared to triceratops. I think we all know what these herbivores were armed with, but if you somehow don't know, well, we had the big three. Two long brow horns, which would have grown over 1.15 meters or 3.77 feet in length, as well as a smaller nasal horn, a gigantic solid fur that acted as frontal defense, and a low center of gravity ideal for holding ground. These animals were built for combat, and that assisted them in defending themselves against the exact same species as Rexy. A direct hit from a brow horn could be lethal. It also didn't help that these dinosaurs would have been quite agile for their size, making them a threat from practically any angle. And just to go into a little bit of theory work, considering that we see the Rex and Jurassic World Rebirth being more than adept at swimming, I think there would be a decent chance that Rexy would be capable as well. If this is the case, then crocodilomorphs, fish, and other aquatic life would be the embodiment of drive through snacks that she could pick up on a dime. However, I would only see this being an opportunity if the resources around the area were ever lacking. This would earn her a dietary score of 7.5 out of 10. Plenty that she could eat, but also plenty of threats that come along with her. Rexy may have sat upon the top of the food chain in the Jurassic franchise, but in Hills Creek, apex status is always contested. She's not alone here, and it's not by a long shot. At over 5 meters or 16 feet long and over 200 kilograms or 440 pounds in weight, the dubious at best Dakota Raptor was no ordinary dromaeosaurid. If this theropod existed as it was thought to be, it had a robust build for grappling and sickle claws that could tear into flesh with terrifying efficiency. Against the smaller prey in Hell's Creek, that was more than enough. But against Rexy, well, not so much. To Rexy, they would be little more than opportunists. Whenever she would make a successful hunt, one of them would always be not too far behind. However, there is no way that they would ever challenge her in any meaningful way. If they attempted to, then they're getting obliterated. Then there's the wholly debated Nanotyrannus. Whether or not it was a separated species or simply another Rex is an argument for another day. But today, I'm going to be giving them the whore pass. Sleeker, faster, and more agile than full-grown tyrants, these mid-sized carnivores likely fit in the niche of a pursuit predator. To Rexy, they would be annoying at best and thieves at worst. I mean, sure, they would be larger than the Dakota Raptor, but still nowhere near close to the size to challenge Rexy. This is the equivalent of Superman taking on Kraven the Hunter. And then there is the only competitor that truly poses a threat in this ecosystem, this being Tyrannosaurus Rex. This was the largest theropod to walk the planet, the king of the dinosaurs, the first thing that comes to mind when you ask someone to think of a dinosaur. But that is enough glaze for Rex's real species. Onto its actual stats. 
this theropod was a 12.1 meter or 40 foot juggernaut that could easily push 9 tons in weight, with current evidence suggesting it could push significantly more. The largest individuals may have weighed over 11 tons, way heavier than our survivalists today. For Rexy, these rivals were not just another animal in the ecosystem, they would be true equals. A fully mature T-Rex may not have had a hybrid physiology, but why would it need it? The native T-Rex was built for this world. Its skull measuring over 1.5 meters or 5.1 feet could deliver bone crushing bites which are often estimated to be around 50,000 newtons. That is far beyond even the engineered might of Jurassic Park's own T-Rex. On top of that, they had some of the best senses of any dinosaur around and are hypothesized to have been quite intelligent, or that the heavy individuals would have been quite slower than Rexy as a result of lacking that movie magic. They are estimated to reach around 20 to 25 kilometers an hour or 12 to 15 miles per hour at their highest speeds. T-Rex also have extensive fossil evidence of intraspecific conflict, meaning that they were quite prone to getting into fights and surviving from them. I mean, this everybody's favorite Stan, whose skull was pierced and had its vertebrae broken, however he managed to survive and heal. Naturally though, wild T-Rexes are not going to go out of their way to fight for zero reason, but when food is scarce or boundaries are crossed, well then there's no avoiding it. Something would go down. Hence, I would give Rexy a solid 7 out of 10 when it comes to resistance to competition and threats. I mean, she coexisted with different predators in varying locations that were quite restrictive in space. With an entire continent to traverse in, I think she could handle the pressure quite well, though with native T-Rexes, conflict would still occur. But now it's time to go through the final survival scenario. In this scenario, Rexy the Jurassic Park icon herself is no longer confined by paddocks, islands or sanctuaries. For the first time in her life, she's not on display and she's not a test subject. She's just another T-Rex in this world. Dropped into the late Cretaceous, Rexy must navigate the ancient floodplains of Hell's Creek. At first, the new environment would be overwhelming. There are no artificial feeding routines, no familiar fences to patrol, only a sensory overload of insect cores, shifting winds and distant bellows echoing through the underbrush. Her first few hunts are easy. She tests her strength on smaller prey, Struthiomimus, even Anornithomimus. I mean, she was used to hunting modern wildlife, even hunting the extremely quick Gallimimus. All that was required was patience and timing. Within weeks, she begins leveraging terrain, ambushing prey at river crossings, utilizing fallen logs and gullies to hide her bulk. Arguably being the most intelligent creature in this region, she begins to recognize watering hole schedules and migration paths. And when a Pachycephalosaurus stumbles away from its group, she takes it down swiftly, learning the value of timing over brute force. Still, this region is not an amusement park, and not every fight is hers to win. She encounters an Ankylosaurus early on. She circles but does not engage. She might be hungry, but not nearly hungry enough. The reward is not worth the risk. Instead, she develops new hunting tactics, intimidation. Her roars are unlike anything that exists within this region. Her strange loud noises would be immensely successful in scaring off competitors without having to meet them face to face. She forces smaller theropods like Dakota Raptor and younger Rexes to scatter and abandon carcasses. These scavenged meals fill the gaps between hunts, sparing her energy and injury. But a greatest trial does not come from herbivores or raptors. It comes when meeting another Tyrannosaurus. This Rex would be younger and still far from his prime. Still, he's born of this land. He knows the terrain, the ambush points, and how to read her behaviors that Rexy is still decoding. Their first encounter is a standoff. Low bellows, wide arcs, no contact. The tension, however, still lingers. Over the next few months, their paths cross repeatedly, sometimes near prey, sometimes in the dead of night, but eventually when resources run thin, conflict is unavoidable. Rexy ambushes a herd of Edmontosaurs. Having hunted Parasaurolophus in the past, she had some sort of experience in dealing with Hadrosaurs targeting the weakest individual she chases, and while it tries to utilize its weight to knock Rexy to the side, she still manages to keep up, clamping her jaws around its neck and bringing down this titan. But that is where the young male enters the scene. The battle is brutal. Teeth clash, roars echo. The native tyrant is strong, but Rexy is relentless, larger, stronger, with a lifetime of surviving artificial extinction level events. She wins, but not without cost. Deep gashes marks her sides, imprints that will last forever. She limps for days and slowly recovers. She becomes more cautious around the area. She starts managing her territory, not just surviving in it. She watches from vegetation rather than charging in. She lets other predators do the dirty work and then asserts her dominance only when it's safe. She begins trailing Triceratops herds but only strikes when a calf is separated after she forces them to scatter. She learns to use storms to mask her movements and the thick fog near riverbanks to conceal her approach, even learning to fish from the water's edge, picking out any aquatic animal that gets too close. 
and then something remarkable happens. A large male enters the territory, tipping 11 tons in weight, he is a true giant. Thinking another confrontation would occur, Rexy moves to scare off this potential competitor. As they meet face to face, Rexy roars to a lack of aggressive response. I mean, the male wasn't looking for any fight, rather to produce offspring. Now, of course, he pulls out all the stops to impress this potential partner. They tolerate each other's presence for some time until he is finally accepted. Eventually, their offspring hatch and grow. Hunting with each other, you would have the combination of speed and height of Rexy, as well as the mass and bite force of the native Rex. Together, these two could take down even a large Triceratops or Edmontosaurus. The offspring, however, would inherit Rexy's height and endurance while obtaining the male's mass and bite force, good as a Tyrannosaur could possibly get, being apex predators from birth. Not a manufactured weapon, but rather an evolutionary juggernaut. Still, not every hatchling could reach adulthood. Younger Rexes, Dakota Raptors, and Nano Tyrannosaurs pick off a few throughout the years. However, the remaining grow in space into new habitats. For the first time ever, Rexy is not in a time not meant for her. I would argue that this T-Rex would be just at home like a true theropod. Rexy's ultimate survival score tallies up to 23.5 out of 30, so it seems that Rexy would perform rather well in the Cretaceous period, which is not a big surprise to me. I do think that she would be stronger than other T-Rexes in her same weight class, but it gets fishy when it's the highest estimates. And unlike the Indominus Rex, she's not overly aggressive, and she's part of the same species as the main resident. Also remember, though this is a speculative survival scenario of placing Rexy in the real world, this is not a fictional power scale. And with that all being said, we've reached the end of the video. Video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below what you'd like to see next. I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya, mates.